sisters. Welcome to St. Mary Magdalene Catholic Church. The community would like to welcome our guests and visitors who are with us this morning. We wish to welcome any members of the armed forces joining us today. Greetings to our home viewers as well. We're, we are in God's home temple, so we, so we respectfully ask that all cell phones, pagers, games, and other electronic devices be turned off at this to maintain the sanctity of the mass. Thank you. The words to our hymns will be up on the video screens. We have a few announcements that I would like to bring to your attention. As a reminder, please follow the protocol of using face covering during Mass. Remember that it is allowed to take away only after you receive the communion and take a step to the side to consume. Cover your nose and mouth again and proceed to your seat. To exit, follow the direction of hospitality ministers. Thanks for your kindness. St. Mary Magdalene Catholic School is our parish school and is now enrolling students grades kindergarten through eighth grade. Eighth for the 2021-2022 through 2020, through academic session. Visit the school website at www.smmcs.org or call 281-446-8535 for more information. Due to the holy days of Easter, the parish office will remain closed Monday, April 5th. Normal schedule will resume on Tuesday, April 6th. Our parish will celebrate a special benediction in honor of the Feast of the Divine Mercy on Sunday, April 11th at 3 p.m. in the church. Please come and pray with us, the Chaplet of Divine Mercy. This weekend's second collection is the capital is for capital campaign. Please in indicate capital and on your check if you do not have any envelope. Thanks for your giving generosity. As you begin this Eucharist celebration, together let us sing, celebrate with joy. Today, we mm -hmm. celebrate with joy and gladness the day of the Lord's resurrection, for Christ is risen from the dead. Mm -hmm. So let us begin our worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My sisters and brothers, to be less unworthy to celebrate this Eucharist, let us acknowledge our sins and ask for God's forgiveness. Lord Jesus, 
You raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring light to those in darkness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you gave yourself to heal us and bring us strength. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. May he forgive us all our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who on this day, through your only begotten Son, have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity, grant, we pray, that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may, through the renewal brought by your Spirit, Rise up in the light of life through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak and said, 
you know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did, both here in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible, not to all the people, but to us, the witnesses chosen by God in advance, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to all the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God to judge the living and the dead. In him, all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, if then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, for Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not of what is on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ your life appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. The word of the Lord. From the Holy Gospel according to John. On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark and saw the stone removed from the tomb. She ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, they have taken the Lord from the tomb, and we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. 
He bent down and saw the burial cloths there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloths there and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial cloths, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and he believed. For they did not yet understand the scripture that he had to rise from the dead. My brothers and sisters in Christ, the gospel of the Lord. God is good, all and all the time. I'm so glad to have you all in church this uh, morning, this Easter Sunday morning, to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is certainly a beautiful day to, to have hope and to have faith in the resurrection of the Lord. But before we got to this point of Christ's resurrection, there was his crucifixion and his passion and death. So before there was Easter Sunday, there was a Good Friday. A Good Friday on a day when everything appears so dark and so, um, so sorrowful. A day when many uh, abandoned the master and some denied him, and some uh, persecuted him, some killed him, and some nailed him to the cross. And there were some others also who uh, were just there, helpless. They wanted to do something, but they couldn't. But in the midst of it all, it was Jesus himself who chose this path of salvation for us. It was God who in his love for us decided to, to come down among us and take on the guilt of each and every one of us so that he can make us new once again. Jesus is the one, the Passover lamb, who was slain for us so that we may not have to die ourselves. And so the Good Friday story reminds us also of um, the pain and suffering that some of us may have or some of us are going through even today. And all of that will lead also to the resurrection, a time when there is joy and uh, celebration and also a time to, to, to share the faith with other people. Just like it is or it was on the first day of the week for Mary Magdala that came to the tomb and later on had to go back and share the story of what she saw with the disciples of Jesus. We are so blessed in our parish to have a woman so faithful and so in tune with the love of Jesus uh, uh, to be named a patron as a church. Our church is known as St. Mary Magdalene Catholic Church, a name uh, a of our patron, Mary of Magdala. So for each of us, Easter should be every day here at St. Mary Magdalene Church. But this woman, Mary of Magdala, she came early that morning to when, while it was still dark. So she took some risk to go out very early in order to go and see the tomb of of her master, of her friend, Jesus Christ. We remember that Mary of Magdala and other Marys and Mary, the mother of Jesus, were at the foot of the cross, you know, and they saw all that happened to Jesus 
on that uh, East, uh, Good Friday. And when he died, they, uh, they, were, they didn't have enough time for, for Jesus to be anointed. So even the oil that she, she had, uh, she couldn't use it. And of course, before, before Jesus went up to the Passion, uh, he, she has already anointed Jesus. And people were complaining at the time, why spend so much money of this oil on, uh, on Jesus? We could have sold this oil and used the money for the poor. But Jesus said, you will always have the poor with you, but you won't always have me. So she has prepared me for my burial. So Jesus was telling the people at the time what was going to happen to him. He knew about this even beforehand. Of course, he is God. And so on this Easter morning, Mary of Magdala wanted to go back and do all that is proper for, for, for the burial of Jesus. The beauty of our faith as Catholics is that we recognize that um, it's not just the spirit that is important, that matter matters, that um, our bodies also matter to God. And indeed, that is the reason for the incarnation of the Son of God taking a flesh like each of us. And cru being crucified on that cross, he also rose with that same flesh, that body, and he will ascend to heaven. And so the body is important. That is why we give a befitting barrier to a Christian when they die. We don't just throw the body into the ocean and uh, we don't just um, um, do anything with it just as if it doesn't matter. We, we bring it to the church and we pray uh, for it. And we also uh, go back and, and, uh, and place it in a place where we can always honor it. And that is what Mary of Magdala wanted to do early this Sunday morning. And of course, when, he got, when she got there, the, the body wasn't there. There was an empty tomb. And of course, they believed when they saw that. When they saw the empty tomb and all the clothes that was used to wrap Jesus were left by the side, they believed. And someone has already, of course, rolled the stone away for them. Uh, because the body, the, the, the whole thing was, uh, was put inside a, a, a tomb and a stone was used to cover the front. And they saw the stone has been removed from the tomb and the body wasn't there anymore. That is the proof of the resurrection. The empty tomb, the fact that um, uh, uh, it speaks to us to the fact that death cannot hold our master captive. Death has no final say. God and life has a final say. So even the tomb cannot hold him, and death cannot conquer him, because he is God of the living and the dead. This Easter Sunday morning, we come to celebrate our faith in the God who loves us and who has given himself up to us. It's also an invitation for us to, to, to hold on to Jesus as much as we can and to go out also to become a witness to the life of faith that God has given us. We cannot claim to be Christians if we are not sharing the faith of God with others. Last night we, we had the privilege of, uh, of welcoming um, other Christians uh, who wanted to be Catholic to be part of our fold. And not only that, we also had the privilege of, um, of having the baptism of some adults in our church. Being born again is part of the Christian life. When someone renounces sin and turns to God, the person is kind of uh, rising up from, from the dead of sin into a new life in Jesus Christ. So the resurrection of Christ begins even now. Even before our death, we are already rising because our faith in God tells us so. And we're so happy to have those individuals join the church and to be part of our family. It's a sign of, of course, of the resurrection of Jesus because when he rose from the dead, 
the disciples were able to go out and preach. They were emboldened. They were empowered. They had the strength. And they witnessed something they have never seen before. And that helped them to really remember all that Jesus had already told them. Last night, we, were, we, we, we read a lot of texts from the scriptures of uh, reminding ourselves of the history of our salvation. Because it's so important to always go back to our history. When we don't remember it, then we, we make mistakes of the past. And so it's important for us, parents, grandparents, for all of us, children, to, to know more about our faith and to learn more about it, to go back and read it. That is what the whole of Lenten time is meant, was meant to be. And that is what every, every Christian does. Jesus did that too as a Jew. He was able to, to put everything about his, his life in the context of the Jewish feasts and celebrations. And so we who are Christians, we ought to do the same. We ought to go every day uh, to church. And every Sunday is a new day for us because we have now made the, the first day of the week to be the most important day in the life of every Christian. This is the day that Jesus rose from the dead. Our master couldn't be held in the tomb. And it's a day for us to celebrate. And every Sunday is another Easter for us. So it's not enough really to, to really uh, think about Easter as one, one day of the year. It should be an every week experience for us. And if possible, a daily one too. But it's so important to, to share this faith and to know more about it and to read it to our children, our grandchildren, and then to, to live it out too uh, in everything we do. So when we, when our children are watching Star Wars and all those kind of uh, Harry Potter and all those uh, fairy tales kind of issues, uh, we need to, uh, to, to go back also to the Word of God in the Scriptures and try to to understand what this faith means for us and be able to read stories of our faith uh, that helps us, that will help us to be a better person. And the life of Jesus wasn't a fairy tale, of course. It was something that happened in history, that happened in time. Of course, God is eternal, is infinite. He can be pinned to a particular time, but because of us, because he loves us, he chose to be born in time, and of course, he chose to suffer too for our sins, to take away our sins on the cross of Calvary, and so rise again. Because he rose again, we can go back and trace everything that he did for us. It is for that reason that St. Uh, Peter, in the first reading today, was trying to tell that story to others, you know, uh, to tell them that, look, this Jesus, we ate with him, we touched him before and after his death and resurrection. And it's something real. It's not something that is just told, a story that is told by someone else. But the life of Christ will be made known much more in our society today if each of us assume that resurrection also, if we are able to, to rise from our uh, our fears and doubts and worries and pains and allow the glory of God to shine in us and through us to other people. Because a Christian who is not joyful cannot really claim to be one. Because Jesus and his resurrection has given us that joy that, that lasts forever. And that joy, nothing can take it away from us not even death, because Jesus has conquered death. And so today, as we reflect on our life, as we share our meals together as family, uh, let us appreciate this gift of love and faith and, and hope that God has given us. And what a blessing to be able to gather this year together once again, because this time last year, we could not 
And when we see or remember all that has happened in the course of the year, we can only be grateful to God that we are still alive and we are still able to thank him. And for all those who lost a dear one in the course of the past year, uh, through because of coronavirus or because of other forms of illnesses, our faith in the resurrection of Jesus makes us stronger. And even though the pain and the grief will still be there at some time, but we, uh, you can always look up to Jesus, you know, the one who rose again, and uh, ask for the intercession of Mary, the mother of Jesus, of Mary of Magdala, Mary Magdalene, also to intercede for you, because through their own pain, they kept hoping and trusting that Jesus will always be there for them. And he did. He rose again, and he will rise again. And all those who have, uh, who have died in our, in, our, in our community, in our families, they will also rise with Jesus on the last day. So let us trust in God, and let us continue to do the good we can, even today. And it's important for us to do it, to do that good, cheerfully and trustingly, because God is always good. So may the resurrection of Christ bring newness of life to each of us. When I think of the resurrection these days, I must, uh, I would just, uh, I'm so um, uh, to touched by the, in the last uh, few weeks, you know, three weeks, I mean, about four or five weeks ago, we had this freeze in the whole of, uh, of our area. And um, even though as much as you try to cover some plants and all of that, some of them were still, still with that, you know. And um, I just look out in my, in my yard out there and I saw, I thought these plants were dead. They were all brown and everything is out. But now they are, some of them are really getting out with green and some beautiful flowers coming out from them. And the, I think of that and I think of Jesus' resurrection. That even though it appears he was dead, he did die, of course. But then he rose again. So death is not, doesn't have the final word. Life in Jesus is the final word. And so we are joyful today. We thank God for our lives and we can keep on singing hallelujah because the Lord is risen. Happy Easter to all of you. Last night we prepared the Pascha candle and lit it, and Jesus became our light once again, the light of the world. And we also renewed our baptismal promises. This morning we will do the same, we will renew our baptismal promises, and after the words that we have said, we will sprinkle water, uh, holy water on everyone in the church and those in the Family Life Center. I will sprinkle the water on you after the Mass. Dear friends, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may rise with him to a new life. Now that we have completed our Lenten observance, let us renew the promises we made in baptism when we rejected Satan and his works and promised to serve God faithfully in his holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, do you reject Satan? I do. And all his works? I do. And all his empty promises? I do.
Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, was crucified, died, and was buried, rose from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. God, the all-powerful Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, has given us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and forgiven all our sins. May he also keep us faithful to our Lord Jesus Christ forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
On these sacred days of this, let us pray that the resurrection of Christ will touch, heal, and strengthen all who are in need. For the Church of God gathered in Easter joy throughout the world, that even in times of sin and disappointment, we will never forget the central truths of our faith celebrated this day. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all entrusted with healing the world's nations, that peace will reign in their minds and hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the newly baptized and confirmed, that throughout the coming 50 days of Easter, they will rejoice in their newness of life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who will gather with their families this day, that celebrations will be marked by reconciliation and true rejoicing in the risen Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, that they will know the healing power of the risen Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, that they will rejoice in the reward of everlasting life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Eddie Graham Chaplin, Mary Marilyn Sparding, Greg McDonald, and Diane Stevens and family, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In the silence of our hearts, let us add other intentions. Your people call out to you, O God of wonder, hear our prayer and strengthen our Easter faith. We ask this in the name of your Son, the one who suffered, died, and rose from the dead, Christ, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for our offerings.
Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. <coughs> Exultant with Paschal gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this day, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with Pascal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. <laughs> So you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Daniel, our bishop, and all those who hold in to the truth, hand on, to, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them, we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion, celebrating the most sacred day of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, our spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cledus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting hand. Therefore, Lord, we pray, Graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in, your, in every respect, and make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, 
our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with hands, with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said a blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said a blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, Lord, as you celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, almighty God, Command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants. Our departed loved ones in the past year, particularly who have gone before us with a sign of faith and rest in the sleep of Christ. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though unworthy, hope in your um, abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, Mary Magdalene, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through him you continue to bless and make holy all these good things, O oh Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, 
O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of power will be. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Please join us in singing Alleluia number one.
Let us pray. Look upon your church, O God, with unfailing love and favor, so that renewed by the, sac by the Paschal mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. On behalf of myself and uh, Father Augustine, uh, the Associate Pastor, I want to wish you all a very uh, happy Easter and God's uh, blessings on you during this season of Easter. And I also want to use this time to thank all those who have worked very hard to ensure that we, we have a wonderful and beautiful celebrations of the Triduum of the Holy Week and all through the Lenten season up to this time. I want to thank all the ministers in the church for assisting us to have this beautiful celebration today, uh, particularly the Earth and Environment group that helps uh, in decorating the church for this kind of uh, celebrations. Uh, the last three, four days, they've been coming in and out every day to change the clothing, the dressing, the color, and it's been so wonderful to have them. And it's a sign really of the lost resurrection in our lives as people give of themselves to serve the church. Thanks to all the acolytes and, uh, and sacristans and the MCs of the parish. Thanks to all our lectors uh, um, and all the extraordinary ministers of Holy Communion who at this time are helping us in other ways. And thanks to the hospitality ministers for uh, for doing the work of, uh, of ushering in our parishioners during this time. We are appreciative of all you do, and may God continue to bless all of you. I'd like to just remind us of uh, one thing, that uh, next Sunday is uh, Divine Mercy Sunday, and it's a special day in, uh, in the church as we honor the mercy of Jesus who died for us on the cross and rose again today for us. So the, the, the novena started on Good Friday, it's going to, and the, the actual celebration is on Sunday. So all the masses next Sunday will celebrate divine mercy, but we also have a special uh, benediction, a uh, chaplet of divine mercy prayer and, uh, and uh, benediction at 3 p.m. 3 p.m. on Sunday next week will be a special celebration of the divine mercy. Join us for that and for other masses also as you can. As you can. And our Catholic school, St. Mary Magdalene Catholic School is, uh, is enrolling students uh, grades K through eight for the next academic year. Uh, please um, check the bulletin for more information. I invite everyone to please take home a copy of the bulletin and to get more familiar with our parish activities. A very special thanks to our choir today. The children's choir have done fantastically good today. And I appreciate it. I was so glad that I'm, I was assigned to this mass today. You know, hearing these lovely angels and, uh, and voices is really uh, very heartwarming. It's a, it's a beautiful day to celebrate the joy of, uh, of Easter. Amen. So thank you again, and uh, we pray that next year, this time, we will be more in the church, and everybody will be fully, uh, without a mask, I can see your smiles later <laughs> on, you know. Uh, so hopefully things will change for the better uh, in the coming days and weeks. Uh, but thank you all for your endurance and for your understanding of our protocols here in the parish. I think it's, I believe, and I know it is for the good of everyone for us to keep ourselves safe uh, using the mask in the church. And even everywhere you go, really, I really encourage you to do that now out of this time. So may God strengthen you and bless us. Let us pray for an end to the pandemic. Please stand for final blessing. Bow your head and pray for the Lord's blessing.
May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. 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 And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten Son endow you with the price of immortality. Amen. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal feast come with Christ's help and exalting in spirit to, the, to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. 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 The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks, Thanks to God. To God. Both times been to God today, right? <laughs> 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 <laughs>